Hey everybody, welcome back to Ask a VC. My name is Ryan Floyd, I'm a Managing Director at Storm Ventures. Today I want to talk about churn. It's a topic that constantly comes up and I get a ton of questions about it. So let's jump in. Okay, so you've got a churn problem. You're losing a lot of customers, a lot of revenue on an annual or, or a monthly basis. Now look, if it's a small percentage, 5%, it's natural, it's gonna happen. There's gonna be customers that are leaving. Trying to hold on to 100% of your customer base, certainly at any scale, is gonna be very, very challenging for any company to do. I'm really talking about situations where maybe you're losing 15, 20% of your revenue on an annual basis. You've definitely got a churn problem. There's definitely a lot of work you can do to improve that. The first thing I'll tell you is you're not alone. It's a very, very common problem with SaaS companies to have some meaningful churn at some point in their journey for a lot of different reasons. But the good news is there's a lot of tactics that you can apply to put yourself in a much better position and advance the business. The second thing uh, I'd tell you is stop trying to grow. I think many, many founders try to avoid churn or looking at churn by thinking that they can just grow their way out of it, hoping that things will get better as they gain more customers. And while maybe a different customer set will serve you better than the customer set you've been going after or a particular profile, spending money and just trying to continue to grow and continue to do what you've been doing in the past is not a great strategy. You're just building a bigger leaky bucket and you're really not gonna push the business forward. The third thing to think about when you, when, you, when you realize you've got this churn problem is to avoid organizational blaming, to avoid finger pointing. It's, it's natural to think if you've got a customer success problem and a churn problem, that customer success isn't doing their job. It's similar that when you have a sales problem, you think sales isn't doing their job. But as I've talked about in prior videos, often when you've got a sales problem, it's more complicated than just simply it's a sales problem. There may be lots of other factors at play. There may be you know, product issues and so forth. The same is true when you have churn. It's rarely as simple as one organization's or one function's issue. Look, you're smart. To have gotten to where you are with the business today, if there was a simple answer, I'm pretty sure you already would have come up with it. So stepping back, avoiding blame and finger pointing will serve you well because even though that's the natural tendency, and it may be true that there are individuals in the organization that you may need to replace, right now is not the time to be thinking about organizational blame. And you need to send that message to your entire team because it's all hands on deck to go and solve these problems. And then the final thing I tell you is you need to think about it as a war plan. You need to think about this as immediately coming up with a plan to get well. This isn't a strategy conversation you know, that you can take over six months to figure out what you're going to do about it. You've just been attacked by the most vicious enemy in SaaS, which is churn. And you need to respond aggressively, immediately with a plan and iterate on that plan as you see results. All hands on deck, all focused on how to improve churn. So let's get into some of the components about how to build that plan. Let's start with the most obvious area, customer success. It's all hands on deck. This isn't a time for customer success to be guarded with information and to be holding things back and to try and control uh, all of the interactions. Because this involves churn, customer success needs to take a very open, kind of transparent uh, approach with the rest of the organization. And you need to have executive sponsorship with your most important accounts. You need to ask other members on your team to be making phone calls, doing video calls. Look, email is great, but your house is on fire. You don't want to leave anything to chance. So to the extent you can get customers on the phone and you can have others in your organization that are, that are execs that really understand your business and have a point of view, it's going to make for a much more productive conversation. And again, it's not about blaming customer success. It's about bringing everyone into the tent and collectively trying to think about a path forward. Because only once everyone's on the same page strategically can you really kind of map that out and all be rowing in the same direction. Because without involvement from everybody else, people have opinions, but they may not necessarily be informed opinions. So pull everybody in the best you can and really try to focus on the customers early on Get a sense of 
you know, what they're happy, what they're not happy about. And you'll likely learn a lot in just in those initial conversations about maybe some things that could have been done better, where you can make some adjustments. And hopefully just in doing that one small thing, you'll be able to prevent some customers from churning uh, in, the near, in the near future. So a second kind of component of the plan is thinking about engineering and product. So as I said, it's, it's often a complicated uh, set of issues that lead customers to churn uh, all, you know, all together. It's not one single issue. And oftentimes it has to do with product. Something maybe you took for granted. Maybe there was a workflow that wasn't integrated well enough. Maybe onboarding is just too difficult with the product, the way it's set up today. Maybe the documentation isn't great. There can be a variety of factors, but maybe it was just you know, difficult for customer success to, to get that customer on board and using it. And that's a function of something that's in the product and the design. That's something you need to focus on. And that's not gonna be a quick fix, but it's something that it's good to know now so you can plan it as a priority on your roadmap because until you fix those product issues, any other thing you're thinking about coming out with, unless you're planning on focusing on a completely different part of the market, isn't going to be nearly as effective at uh, driving your business forward. The third area, uh, function I just think about is you know within sales and marketing. And I mentioned earlier, this isn't the time to be thinking about growth. And that's not to say that you shouldn't be selling. You should absolutely continue to sell. Sales folks should be engaging with customers. And hopefully by this point, very quickly within the first couple of you know, weeks or so where there's a lot of sensitivity to it, sales will be far more effective at understanding a lot of those issues and, and solving those problems with the customer and being able to identify it. So you do want to continue to sell. But when I say stop trying to grow, I mean hiring a lot more reps, you know, spending a, spending a lot of that money on that marketing campaign that you're planning on doing. A lot of that doesn't make as much sense right now. Because until you really understand churn and how you're going to fix it, you're just going to be creating a bigger le leaky bucket. Another thing to be thinking about on the marketing side in particular is are you really targeting the right customers? There's a lot of analysis. It's a good time to really step back and take a look at it and say, is there a particular profile of our customers that are churning more than others? Is there a price point that we're selling at that leads to more churn than others? And you'd be amazed at what you'll learn just by doing that analysis, which will then inform sales and marketing going forward on where they ought to be allocating uh, dollars to create you know, the most stable customer base given the product that you have to sell today. So let's talk about a hypothetical example, kind of to pull all of this together. You have a customer that's churned, and they churn likely because the champion left. And as I mentioned earlier, you might think your immediate reaction might be, ah, customer success, we should have spent more time with more people inside our customer so that we didn't have a risk of churn. And champion churn, this is something everyone should be thinking about because of course you're at risk. If you've only got really one person that sees value in your product uh, at a customer and that person leaves, you shouldn't be surprised that they're gonna churn. But I'll tell you, that's rarely just a function of customer success. There's likely other reasons why others inside the organization don't see value. And that may lead to thinking about the product. Maybe the product's too hard for others inside the organization to use. Maybe it's too hard for the champion to communicate internally the value that the organization is getting out of it. So coming at it from a product standpoint, you know, and, and, and thinking about it, how do you integrate with your customer's workflow? Do you make other people's jobs easier? Uh, and these sorts of questions from a product standpoint, you know, might also be a factor in, in, in why when the champion left, you know, you not only did you churn, but why no one else inside that organization was necessarily seeing value. And even on the sales and marketing side, you might ask yourself, well, with this particular customer's profile, do we have a lot of other customers that have that profile that are churning as well? Do, we, do a lot of customers that look like that have a similar sort of challenge where there's really only one person who's the champion? And all of a sudden, you may conclude then that you know, we need to spend a lot more time bear hugging those customers, or you may conclude that's not a good target for us to be selling to in the future because we're always going to be at risk of churn, and all those things will fall out. My point is, it's, it's not just simple, usually, 
it was a customer success issue. And so thinking about it holistically about what's really driving churn will do a much better job of informing the organization going forward in terms of how to really uh, push the business to the, to the next level. Leave me any comments, engage with me, let me know what you think. If there's something else you'd like me to uh, put out a video on or thoughts on this, other things maybe I've missed, let me know and let's have a conversation offline. And until next time, uh, thank you and talk to you then.